If you all are looking for another great week of meals, I've got it. I'm here for you. <laughs> Today's meal prep is so exciting. And of course, we're starting out with Monday and it's going to be roasted tomato soup and turkey melts. It has been probably almost two years since I have made roasted tomato soup. And I forgot how stinking easy it is with tomato season upon us here in central Pennsylvania. It is one way to use up extra tomatoes you have from maybe a salsa project or if you have extra in your own garden. It's just a delicious summer evening meal that's not too heavy that everybody really enjoys even on a super hot day. So I'm using Roma tomatoes for this simply because they're a lot less juicy than a lot of the stock tomatoes or beef tomatoes, big tomatoes. <laughs> so this will make a thicker tomato soup instead of having a really runny or watery tomato soup. So on my cookie sheet here, I put down some parchment paper. I have some small cherry tomatoes, a variety of colors, just to bring in more flavor. And then we are going to cut up a onion. You could do a purple onion in this. You could do a small onion, a big onion, depending on what your family enjoys or you enjoy. If you like a lot of onion, we love onion in our house, so no worries there. And then you're gonna take an entire clove or two entire cloves rather of garlic and you're going to cut the stem part off of them you're going to place them down on the sheet and roast them in with the tomatoes as well once everything is on the sheet you're going to drizzle it all with olive oil you can use really any oil you prefer but just for the flavor i like olive oil for um, roasting tomatoes. And then I'm just covering everything with some pink Himalayan salt. And then we're going to put this beautiful summer tray of tomatoes into the oven to roast. And as usual, all of the recipes will be linked or typed out below if there is a recipe to go with what I'm showing you. So we are going to jump ahead a little bit. I really wanted to get this entire week prepped up as quickly as possible. It was a busy day, had a lot on my plate. So I'm actually jumping into Tuesday's prep here. We are going to be doing a sausage sheet pan meal with sweet potatoes and Brussels sprouts. I knew that um, I could probably put this in with my roasting tomatoes if I needed to. And I didn't mention this, but the turkey melts for Monday is something I will make on that evening for dinner. I won't be prepping those ahead of time. So once I have the tomato soup prepared, which I'll finish off here in a minute, then Mondays will be wrapped up. So for Tuesdays, for the sheet pan meal, which y'all know, I'm a sheet pan meal lady. <laughs> I love my sheet pan meals. It's kind of our alternative to a lot of crock pot meals. We don't have very many crock pot meals that our family enjoys. So roasting sheet pan meals is my fast and easy alternative to crock pot meals. And they reheat super well either in the oven or in the air fryer. I diced up the sweet potato and I'm just going to take a big Ziploc bag and drizzle some oil in there. Could be avocado, could be olive oil, um, whatever you prefer. And I'm just going to kind of massage it into the potatoes. It really doesn't take much oil at all whenever you do it this way um, because it gets coated very, very well inside of that Ziploc bag. I'm gonna dump that out onto the tray and I did line it with some parchment paper just to help out with the cleaning process at the end of this. Meal preps always produce a lot of dishes so I'm usually thinking ahead on you know, future self, my future self <laughs> on um, the dishes situation. So trying to help myself out. On the other end of the sheet pan meal, I wanted to do some Brussels sprouts. So I'm just cutting off some of the tough ends that were on these Brussels sprouts, cutting them in half and then throwing them into a Ziploc bag. Now, if you get larger Brussels sprouts, you're going to want to cut them into fourths for sure. Um, but if they're small like these, you can cut them in half and usually they'll roast 
in a good time frame. So we're going to put all of this into the bag and drizzle it again with an oil. We're going to rub it around on the Brussels sprouts, get them coated really well. That's why I use this method. I know some people would prefer not to use up a Ziploc bag this way, but I just find that everything gets coated a lot better more evenly with the oil whenever I put it in a bag versus a bowl and I'm just stirring it around. So we're going to stick everything in an even layer across the cookie sheet and then I'm going to be taking an onion and I'm just using again a nice um, white onion. I'm going to take big slices out of this. Um, you can do this however you like. You could dice them up. I personally enjoy eating onion, sliced onion. So having that in with my sweet potatoes is really yummy to me. And then we're going to top all of this off again with just some salt. We're going to let those flavors really shine with the onion and our vegetables, not adding over too much seasoning. Sometimes just having a good hearty um, basic meal is so yummy to me. I know I love adding tons of different seasonings and flavors, but there's nothing like just having some good veggies to fill your tummy and make you feel good. So on top of this for some protein in this meal for Tuesday, we are going to add in some sausage. Now, sometimes I do dinner sausage links, but this time I just decided to slice up some dinner sausage and I'm going to just scatter that over top of the veggies and you've got one whole meal. And actually I've even done this as a lunch prep where I roast it up like this and then I just divide it into smaller like glass storage containers and I can pull it out for my lunch or anybody else in the household that needs a lunch can pull it out throughout the week so that is really convenient and one of my favorite lunches actually now we're headed back to our yummy tomato soup it is done and out of the oven and we have our sheet pan meal in the oven so you're gonna take everything except for the garlic off of this pan and put it into the blender. Now you wanna make sure you have a blender that has a vent hole on the top. You don't want any explosions of hot liquid or anything like that. So if you've never blended something hot, be mindful of that for sure. And then you're gonna take the garlic and you're going to squeeze it a bit and the garlic cloves will actually fall right out of the skin or the outer shell. And oh, this is so good. I could almost eat these. I know there are some people that do and maybe what I need to do is just roast some up like this and try it on a salad or something like that. But it smells so good. So once you have them out of the skin, you're gonna dump them into the blender along with some broth and some fresh basil, some thyme, a few other seasonings. You're gonna add some salt into it as well. And this is how easy this is. That's why I said I just have forgotten about making summer tomato soups like this. Um, but you're gonna just blend it up and make sure you've got a lid that can vent because if you've got um, the heat going on with an airtight seal, it can really add a lot of pressure inside of your blender. And then you're going to add in some heavy cream just to top it off. And it's just as thick as it looks. It's just as delicious as it looks. My daughters were begging for more of this. So, so delicious. Okay, so Wednesday is going to be meatballs, deviled eggs, roasted carrots, and then I will make a tossed salad on that evening. So I'm starting out by putting some of the eggs on the stove to get them cooked up to make my deviled eggs. In the meantime, the sheet pan meal was out and I just set this on my dining room table a lot of times or anytime I'm meal prepping, if I want things to cool down, I just kind of get them out of the kitchen, get them out of the way and let them cool down while I'm working on something else. So to go with Wednesday's meal, like I said, we're gonna have some roasted carrots. I love roasted carrots. I feel like there was another video not that long ago that maybe I was talking about how much 
we love roasted carrots and part of it I believe is because they almost caramelize on their own without much added to them. They have the extra natural sweetness to them and then that sweetness comes out in sort of a caramelized form and it's just so, so delicious. So all I do is cut the carrots into whatever size I want them to be, but I do try to make sure they are all the same size. If you're roasting anything, you want everything around the same size because you want it all to get done around the same time. You don't want a big carrot in there that is taking forever to soften up and then in the meantime you have a small piece of carrot that's burning to a crisp. So <laughs> having everything the same size is pretty important. And then whenever I'm done lining all of that up I just like to drizzle it with some olive oil and or avocado oil whatever I have on hand. These do pretty well like I said without much added to them whenever they caramelize. So I don't always put them into a bag to be coated with the oil. Um, I just like to drizzle it on. Then I'm topping it with some salt. And like I said this day, I just was going for the basic flavors, not a ton of seasonings. So popped that into the oven. As you're seeing, because I have my oven on, I'm definitely trying to keep things rotating in and out of the oven, especially on hot summer days. You don't wanna be running your oven all day long or turning it off and then reheating it back on, all of that. So I tried to plan out getting things in the oven as fast as other things were coming out. So for Wednesday's meatballs, you all have seen me make these so many times. So I usually start out with a pound or two of ground beef. I shake in some almond flour because we do a lot of gluten-free alternatives in our house. I add in an egg per pound and then I add in some sort of seasoning. This time I'm using the um, Kinder's steak seasoning, I believe. And I'm just going to be putting these in a nine by 13 pan. Now I'm not greasing this pan because this is actually not what they're gonna get made in. We prefer to make our meatballs on our cast iron skillet. And so with that being said, we don't need to bake them in this pan, but this is a great holding place for them until the night we're ready to eat them. So it's just my way to make things go a little bit faster. And it's sort of a fancier way of doing like frozen meatballs out of the grocery store, but it just still makes it fast and simple when I'm ready to make dinner. So I am also pulling together my deviled eggs and oh my goodness, of course on a day that I was filming, I would get a batch of eggs that were just not cooperating with peeling. And I know y'all have given me tips before on good ways to peel eggs, but sometimes they do well and other times they simply don't. Um, so of course, in the comments, if you wanna leave me more suggestions on better ways to peel hard boiled eggs, you can definitely do that. And you all gave me a lot of great suggestions in a video not long ago on little add-ins. I did not realize if you look into deviled eggs around the globe, <laughs> There is quite a variety of deviled eggs that are out there. There are people that add tuna into the yellow part. There are people that add um, crab and tomato sauce and different spices and my lands. They have quite the variety around the world of how people prepare deviled eggs. We are pretty basic around here, I would say. Um, we add in mayo and mustard, and sometimes I add a sweetener, I've mentioned that, or some, um, like my mother-in-law does, she puts a little bit of maple syrup in to just sweeten up the filling just a little. Not, not too much, but just a little. Um, but this day I went super basic and just added in the very bare minimums, nothing too crazy. Don't ask me why I didn't put all of this into a Ziploc bag and pipe it into these eggs. I was just 
trying to get to the end goal <laughs> of getting this all accomplished. So I just scooped it in. It was nothing too fancy. My husband loves whenever I get out my immersion blender and blend the filling and make it totally smooth. That's his favorite way of having deviled eggs. At this point, the carrots were finished. So I just scooped them off of the tray and put them into the glass pan. And like I usually say, my best reheat tip on roasted veggies is the air fryer or you can put them in the oven or you can put them in a skillet if you want to just to reheat them um there's lots of different options there okay so thursday we're going to do a lemon pepper marinated chicken with broccoli salad and parm asparagus and i was so excited when i saw this bunch of asparagus at the store it is just really thin little pieces of asparagus and I love when they're thin like this instead of being super big and bulky. It's my favorite way and our family enjoyed these so much this week. It really was a highlight of our meals just because they are so tender and easy to eat when they are this small. So I just lay them out on a pan, drizzle them with an oil, salt them and then I take my potato peeler and I actually just cut these nice shards of shards is that the right word slivers of parmesan off of the block and cover the asparagus um, with them and pop them in the oven so again next thing into the oven just trying to keep the oven working hard for me this day so now I'm going to prepare the lemon pepper chicken this is a really simple put together um, recipe I didn't even do measurements on this to be honest with you guys I just pulled stuff out of my refrigerator and pantry but I'm just juicing some lemons and I'm gonna drizzle that juice the fresh lemon juice over the chicken breast we're gonna add in a little bit of rice vinegar as well as some avocado oil and all of it I am just drizzling over the chicken breast and then we're going to take the kinders lemon pepper seasoning and we're gonna shake that over it as well and then whenever I go to grill these on the night that we eat them we will be adding some more of the kinder seasoning as well as probably rebasting the chicken with the leftover marinade in the bottom of this pan so keeping all the flavors together I probably could have whisked this together in a bowl and then poured it on um, but I just went about it in this manner because I was doing it on the fly I was doing it <laughs> as I was cooking grabbing things and going for it So you all know how much I love the Kinder's Buttery Steakhouse seasoning. And the other week, I actually took that Buttery Steakhouse seasoning as a dry rub on some chicken breast and put it on the grill. And I was just amazed at how well the flavor held out. I just love their seasonings a lot. If you have any other seasoning brands that your family loves that's a tried and true I would love to hear about it in the comments below so let me know all right so going with the lemon pepper chicken and the asparagus we're going to do a broccoli salad and I'm just tearing apart the broccoli I usually like to tear it apart instead of cutting it with a knife because it makes a bigger mess I've said that so many times but um, it's just a little easier to do it but by tearing it apart and then to go in the broccoli salad this time guys i was just basic this day was like we're gonna make sure everybody's fed we're gonna make sure we have good meals but we're going with very basic basic recipes this week so i'm just using some mayo some w sauce <laughs> if you know you know around here and some mustard and you just stir it together and then 
Usually I would add bacon into this. I didn't have any thawed out. I didn't have any on hand. So I decided to just skip that. So we did the, the mayo sauce and then I did do some shredded cheddar cheese in it as well. And this works just as good in my family without the bacon as much as we do enjoy the bacon in there. Um, it's just a good way to get some raw veggies in and it's something that we like and I love this cheddar cheese from Costco. The last two times I think I've been there, I think I've gotten two blocks of it because it's just such a staple in our house. It melts so nice and it has such a great flavor in it. So I was actually shredding it for the broccoli salad and then also shredding it for Friday's meal. So we are gonna get to that in just a second, but I wanted to stir together the broccoli salad, get that put into a container. And as all cold salads are like this, they are better off if you let them sit in the refrigerator for a day or two. Um, the flavors combine a whole lot better and they're just a lot more yummy to eat. Okay, so for Friday, we are going to have taco salad. And taco salad on its own is a very easy meal to prepare. But if I can get even a bit more prepared, <laughs> then all I have to do is put it together or pull it out and quite literally put it on the table. And that's a little bit like this. Um, I can either reheat the meat into the cast iron skillet or I can reheat it in the air fryer or the microwave if I want to. Um, however, uh, maybe if I'm making, you know, corn on the cob or something else with it, it would work out well to do it on the stove top as well. So to go along with our taco salad, I'm making some things for our taco salad bar here. We're going to have shredded cheese. We're going to have my favorite mini bell peppers. We have those in rings. And then I've also diced up some of the purple onion that we love. And then we have a cherry tomato bush on my patio garden that is just being an overachiever. It is producing so many little tomatoes. If I do tomatoes again next year, I'm definitely doing these again because we've just been getting these little cherry tomatoes left and right. And so I decided to go ahead and half them. That way they're a good size for on our taco salads along with the other toppings. Now we will also have guacamole, the little guacamole cups I get from Costco. We will also have some sour cream and my canned jalapeno peppers and salsa and hot sauce and anything else that you like on your taco salad. On the taco meat, I did put the last of my taco seasoning. I need to make another batch of that sometime soon. And whenever this is cooled down, I'll just put it into a container and I can store it with the rest of my toppings. Thank you guys so much for watching today. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. I hope this video gave you lots of meal inspiration and I'll see you in my next video.